Back on the show is Gerald Harris, who's got a, a bunch of guests with him, actually. Uh, his whole family's here joining us on this interview. Gerald, why don't you introduce your, uh, your family to us? Uh, all right, we're going to start from the youngest, all right? All right. She's asleep. Okay. This is Baby Dylan. Hey, Baby Dylan. She's Hi, asleep. Show up toes. Give toes in the camera, baby. <laughs> all right. So we got seven kids all together. Oh, all right? wow. Okay. <laughs> My oldest is 17. He's not here right now. Uh, he's at work. Um, but here's, hey, y'all, just come over here one at a time. Come here, Corey. See you, big head, baby. This is Corey. Say hey, Hi, Corey. Nice to meet you. All right, get out of here. Get out of here, baby. Go. Next. <laughs> this is Kylie. Say hi. Hi, Kylie. Say nice hi, to baby. Meet you. She's a wrestler, state runner up in wrestling. Awesome. Yep. All right, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> this is Dakota. Say hey, Dakota. Hey. Nice to meet you, Dakota. <laughs> Say hi, baby. All right. This is... What's your name? Okay. I'm kidding, man. <laughs> this is Skylar. <laughs> Say hi, Skylar. Hi. All right. Come on, book. Nice to meet you. This is my little, this is my little multiple-time state championship wrestler. Scoot over, man. Say hey. a little box right there. He can see you. Nice the to big meet old you, man. Teeth. He got big teeth like his daddy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Last but not least, uh, this is my beautiful wife. Right here. Say hey, hey, baby. Hey, how are you? I'm doing well. Yourself? Thanks for uh, thanks I'm for being see. on the show. I appreciate it. Of course. <laughs> That's so you're not confused when you see little Asian kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fair Here's enough, man. That's that's awesome. Uh, you know, what's it like? You know, having such a big family like that, and you know them uh, supporting you and everything you're doing. Man, you know, close, close the door, man. It's uh, I retired in 2013. And, you know, I made a lot of money with World Series. Um, Jorge Santiago is one of the toughest guys I've ever fought or ever beat. And I was kind of on a high, but mentally at my worst. You know, I told you about the divorce and my personal life was just off. You know, I just didn't want to be in a cage. And once I met this woman, dude, everything changed. You know, she's like my teammate. She cooks all my meals. I mean, she does. My last fight, you know, my opponent was way overweight fun to talk to you before we said we talk again and she just supported me the whole way i'm like you know babe what should i do she's like hey whatever you want to do I'm, I'm with you you know she she helped me through the whole camp she's helped me cut weight everything so i'm the happiest i've ever been in my life that's great to hear, man. Uh, it sounds like things are, are going great. And obviously, uh, you've had some, you know, adversity to overcome, not just, uh, you know, with the fact that, like you mentioned, your last fight with your opponent, you know, missing weight and all that stuff. But you were supposed to be on the Ultimate Fighter uh, season 25. Uh, do you want to just tell my <laughs> listeners, uh, you know, what happened there with the injury and what sort of uh, forced you off the show? Man, that was a heartbreaker, dude. I was, uh, you know, it's crazy that seven days before I went to the Ultimate Fighter, I usually walk around about 205 out of shape. Um, I did, um, a test cut. So I lost uh, about, I went from one to 171 in five days, which is totally healthy for me. Nothing but water weight. I put it right back on. When I fought at 185, when I stepped in the cage in the UFC, I weighed 193. That's like my magical weight. So I knew that when I went to the ultimate fighter, I had to be lighter than that. Cause it's hard to cut 20 something pounds in 24 hours. So I was getting my body, in, you know, right on my weight. And we were just, my coach and I were just holding pads. We're moving around. My foot got stuck in a mat, and boom, I hit the ground. Oh, man. Tore my Achilles tendon. Worst injury ever. I literally had to call the UFC and tell them, hey, give the contract to somebody else. You know, I actually could have went and, you know, tried to be a warrior. and But I think I would have pissed Dana White off by wasting their time. Right. Yeah, it's, it's, it was the hardest phone call I've ever made. Hardest phone call I've ever made. And and how much you know? How much did it help having your family around you and you know them being there to support you? Because an injury like that, you know, you need a good support system. Oh, I can't lie, it helped. But I'm I'm still right now going through a little bit of of uh, man. I don't want to say depression, but man, I'm just it's hard. An injury like that, it takes a lot out of you. And as a man, you're used to being able to jump up, move around, you know, defend your wife and take care of your kids and I mean I was on a scooter you know I had my leg propped up for hours I was on pain meds um I just felt weak I didn't feel like I was you know me you know I'm watching old videos of myself fighting the way I used to move I literally had to learn how to walk again 
um, on a new Achilles tendon. So uh, mentally, it was really hard, you know. But but I'll tell you this: without the support system that I have now, it wouldn't have been um, it wouldn't have been as good, you know. My recovery, she's it's crazy. My wife actually knew my my physical trainer, you know. It's just been it it gives me something to look forward to. It's coming home to my wife and my family. And then how's the recovery now? Like the injury and everything, is that like all, all back to normal? Are you still getting through that? What's sort of the status right now on that? Yeah, I've been released. I don't want to fight till late June or July, um, if later. I'm not in a rush to get back in there. Uh, I wanted to fight in June because the UFC is coming to Oklahoma City. But, I mean, just because they're coming to Oklahoma doesn't mean they're going to put me on the card. You know, a lot of people don't know my history. As you saw on Twitter, I was kind of ruffling some feathers today. Of course. My but I'm a, I'm a veteran, man. I've been around for a long time. I was on Ultimate Fighter 10 years ago. You know, I'm not new to this game. I'm not up-and-comer. I'll fight wherever. I'll fight at Bellator. I'll fight at World Series. I'll fight at UFC. You know, I'm just going to jump at whatever opportunity comes at me. So, you know, I, I'm just happy to be back to normal now. You know, I'm not 100%. But by this summer, I'll be ready to whoop somebody's ass. <laughs> has there has there been dialogue with you in the UFC since the injury? Yeah, I can't go into detail, but you know what? Um, they've been nothing but um, nice to me. You know, I saw Dana Saturday. I went to see Stipe. You know, Stipe's my old college teammate. That's right. Yeah. Um, you know, I yelled at him and I flexed on him a little bit. He just started laughing. It was like I thought your leg was messed up. Just the fact that he knew, I was kind of like, yeah, okay. <laughs> I take moral victories. Um, Sean Shelby had professional in his responses. Um, he doesn't brush me off. I feel like he actually believes that I can come back and and, and be a factor. Um, I just have to show him. People don't know. You know, people do. They are right and they're wrong. They go, you were in the UFC in 2010. That was a long time ago. That's right. Imagine how much better I got since then. Look, look what David Branch did. Double champion in World Series. He didn't have the greatest comeback fight but i mean we got better we were all brand new i'd only been fighting three years when i was in the ufc yeah and not just that you're one of the few guys who you know left uh, and, and retired you know with with a really good record as well too so there's kind of that you know what if factor uh so that's why it's intriguing uh to see you make this comeback uh, let's talk about mike perry though i'm on twitter today and i see that uh you picked him and you you know you guys had a good back and <laughs> forth and the thing i loved about this gerald is that you were really uh giving it to him there uh especially with the facts where you know he didn't even know who you were and you showed him the gif of slamming <laughs> david branch like just talk a bit about that because uh, honestly for a guy who's in an office today uh, you know being at work was very entertaining <laughs> man you know what i do my best to not call people out out of respect um like if i called out jorge masvidal to me it's a good strategy but he has nothing to gain fighting me that guy is on the top man he's one of the top five fighters in the world and it's uh, it's kind of like being an underground rapper you call out jay-z you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah, but mike exactly. perry is is a very talented guy but at the same time He's he just speaking out of turn too much, you know. I believe he's three and one in the UFC. He knocked out Ellenberger. I never said anything about his talent, not one time. I didn't even discredit his opponents. All I said was, "Look, you're calling out veterans. You got a veteran right here from the UFC. I fought ten UFC veterans. I've been on Ultimate Fighter. I've been where you're trying to go. Let's do it." Nope. The reason why guys aren't responding to Mike is because Mike has they have no value in in beating him. There's nothing there. He's not ranked in the top 20. Um, he's just really good, and he's hot right now. You know, he has to understand that. Nobody's going to take the fight. It's a lose-lose situation for them. What do you think of his whole personality and his, his, you know, sort of the way he markets himself and everything like that? Do you like that, or do you, would, you know, does that kind of bother you the way that he's kind of – he can be a little brutal sometimes. It don't bother me. I think it's in his personality. I'm sure when he's at home or, or at the gas station, he's cool as hell. You know, 99% of the guys I've ever met that were, you know, even even Floyd Mayweather was one of the most humble, nicest people in the world. You know, they can be buttholes when they want to be, but that's his character. That's that's what makes him feel good. He's a, he's a tough guy um, and whatever it takes. But I'll tell you this. If he didn't talk like that, we wouldn't be talking about him right now. That's a good point. Yeah, that's very true. So, you know, I, I people don't understand. I've been doing comedy since I was 19 years old. So I got comebacks for days. I don't. No matter what he said, I was hitting him. Pow, pow, pow. I was ready. <laughs> so, you know, it's good what he's doing. I'm not trying to piggyback off his fame. Like I told him, I said, look, dude, you're, you're getting way over your head. Um, you, you, you're talking about all this money and fame. Dude, you don't even have more followers than me. I, <laughs> that's true. That's that, real, that was one of the best comebacks, too. It's you're like, that's you a real high school. Yeah. <laughs> 
that's a real petty high school comeback, but it's true. You're saying, oh, I'm this, I'm that, and I'm so famous, and all his little fans are jumping in. I said, why doesn't he have more followers? That's If you want a reality check on how famous you are, get on social media and see how many people know you. I know I'm not famous. I know that I'm well-known. I'm not a celebrity. I never said that. I'm known, but I'm not a celebrity. I'm not famous. I'm popular, and he's really he's really getting caught up in the hype. I just want to I just want to punch him in the damn mouth. Like seriously, I've never really wanted to hit people in the mouth that bad. I really want to hit this dude in the mouth. I want to shut him up, which I'm not going to be able to shut him up, you know, unless he's sleeping. And then when he wakes up, he'll start talking again. I really want to kick his ass though, and there's very few people on this earth that I want to do that to. That's not a good thing for him. That is horrible for him. I'm telling you. Uh, I love it. Uh, we're like, as far as training camp and stuff right now. Like I know, uh, obviously, you want to wait a little bit to fight, but are you back in the gym and, and you know doing training and, and everything like that? I was back in the gym on one foot. I mean, I put on some weight, man. I don't like getting heavy. I was two sixteen the other day. That's the heaviest I've ever been, um, other than two thirteen. But I literally I lose weight like nothing. Um, you know, my son's a little wrestler, and he was like a pound over, and I helped him cut one pound. I lost five. So. Weight is never an issue. I would never miss weight. I can't wait to make 170. I'm not big enough for 185. You know, everybody keeps saying, you know, fight David Branch again. I'm just not big. Those guys are huge, man. And I could win. It just it got harder over the years. They just got bigger and bigger. Look at all the weight classes. Most of the champions are from a weight class above. You know, um, and with these new weight cutting rules, people think I'm a butthole, but I'm being super honest. I love what California is trying to do, but the only way you're going to eliminate weight cutting is if you get fighters involved. You can't get a bunch of doctors and, and a bunch of commissioners or former fighters that maybe fought a little bit. You got to get guys like me. I, I know every loophole in the system when it comes to cutting weight. I know every loophole in the system when it comes to making weight and certification. I wrestled in college. Certification was a joke to us. They're like, it's making it safer. It didn't change a damn thing other than how we certified. That was it. So uh, make a way for I, I was going to ask you, some people have suggested that, you know, when you saw it as their visit, that they check the weight and make sure they're not too out of control. Are you in favor of that at all? Or do you think that's something that they should just babysit? You shouldn't have to babysit grown ass men. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, that's too much damn babies. Let me tell you what's going to happen. Just straight up. Yeah. And I don't care if they see this, then great. Yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you tell me, I had, hey, you can't be over 20 percent of your body weight at this. I'm just going to make weight for the damn thing. Seriously, you're not doing you're not. You are changing things for the better, possibly just a little bit. But in the end, guys are still going to cut weight. Let me tell you, and I've said this 100,000 times, the only way you're going to eliminate weight cutting is if you do cage side weigh-ins. I'm, I'm telling you that when we walk in the cage, literally you step on the damn scale before you walk out to the ring. That's the only way you're going to stop it. That makes it totally pointless to cut weight. You know, I'm not big enough for 205. I can make 185 and feel great. And I would step in there. I, I, I would probably end up fighting 205. I, I just couldn't imagine stepping on a scale and stepping in there and feeling like I'm 100%. The only way you're going to stop weight cutting is case I wins. That's it. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, you talked a bit there about a tough 25. Are you watching this season? What are your thoughts? Man, I'm a hater, man. I'm just going to be honest with you. <laughs> uh, I wish the guys the best. I'll tell you my pick. Um, Jesse Taylor is – I really respect him. Um, I've always picked him as one of the top guys. He made it to the finals in my show. Um, I was I was picking uh, Jesse Taylor. I like Gilbert. I think he can make it to the finals. I don't know enough about Lima, but I can see Lima going to the finals. And um, what's the guy's name? He's small, but he's really tough. He wasn't. He's in the UFC now. Uh, Kraus. Kraus. Oh, James Kraus. Yes. Yeah. Those are my top four. Those are my top four that I think can be in the finals. I have no idea, numbers, but you never can go by that. Um, but I, I, I watch it a little bit. It's just kind of hard, you know. It's kind of like say, yeah, because you, you it's kind of like a girl there. breaks up with you, and then you like see her Instagram pictures with another dude. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> That's what it feels like. Yeah. So I'm not like, like jealous or anything. I just I, sh- I know I should have been there, and I know I, I could have made a finale and just done so much for my family. But you know what? Um, I'm taking a different route. And a lot of people don't know that. When I was calling Mike Perry out, they think I'm just some guy trying to get back in. No, man, I was in. I literally got the text saying, you're on the show, hours before I tore my Achilles. Three o'clock. I'll never forget. I got it at three o'clock saying, you're on the show. I was like, cool, because I did a chest x-ray that day. And three hours later, I tore my Achilles tendon. Jesus. Oh, well. 
That's, uh, you know, hopefully it all works out. I mean, the good news here is that, like you said, you had the spot on there. You're still, there's still some dialogue there. It's not like, yeah. uh, you know, your guy is not, they're not picking up the phone, right? Yeah, I think that the UFC is there. Man, when I saw what Dana said about Anderson Silva, I was like, damn. Like, he, he's like cutthroat gangster. Dana White's like that dad that just, just brutally honest. You know what I mean? Like, take it or leave it. So, um, I don't expect them to care about me. I expect them to uh, possibly give me an opportunity if it's there. That's how I take it, you know. Uh, they've got a million fighters to worry about. Um, i got to prove myself. But I'll tell you what, when I come back, it'll be an amazing story for a guy that tore his Achilles and fought months later, possibly, you know, going there and knock Mike Perry out. I think it'd be a great story, man. There's a bunch of athletes out there right now with torn ACLs. I watched a bunch of guys, NFL players. I watched Kobe Bryant's story. I went on YouTube and watched so many videos of guys that with the same injury or other injuries that came back, cost fit people, and were successful. So I hope that my story can motivate somebody. Yeah, you've done all the legwork here. You got the built-in story. You got the you got the the fight with Perry already on the table. You guys have already built that up. I, I'm a fan, man. We they they, they got to do it up here. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it happens uh, sooner rather than later. Well, actually, maybe in a couple months, like you said, you want to get a bit more time off there. So uh, hope it all works out for you, Gerald. But I can't thank you enough for joining me here on the program again. Uh, <laughs> just just remind people where they can find you on social media, and if you got any uh, stand up comedy dates or anything like that, man, the floor is yours. All right, here's the deal, man. I don't like to do like the social media shout out too much because people usually don't even follow it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, G Hurricane on Twitter. That's the best way to do it. G Hurricane. I'm about to go hard on Twitter, man. I love Twitter. It's so fun. Like, I love just checking people. Like, I fact check people all the time. So, go on Twitter if you want to have fun. If you want to laugh, I'm always on there talking crazy. And I am shooting a stand up comedy DVD special November 5th. Um, I got an arena. It's gonna, I've sold out every comedy show I've ever did. Um, so Sunday, November 5th, I'm shooting a DVD stand-up comedy special. And uh, I'll have more information about that later. But I'm going to send you a copy, all right? I, I'm a fan. I, I love <laughs> I love stand-up comedy. So sign me up, man. That's, uh, that, that's Don't watch awesome. it around the kids. Don't watch around no kids, man. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep it I'll keep <laughs> PG. 